Hello friend, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CPP Nuts video series on C++ threading and this video is about unique lock in C++ threading and this is the syntax for unique lock namespace std unique lock and it is wrapper over mutex so it will own the mutex so this m1 is mutex and this lock is nothing but an object of unique lock we'll see all these things so what is the purpose of this unique lock and before this we saw lock guard in previous video so if you don't know what is lock guard i would suggest please go ahead and watch that video before watching this one so that you can link it better okay so first point is the class unique lock is a mutex ownership wrapper yes it will own the mutex whatever you will pass inside object i mean when you will create the object okay and what i mean by ownership and all i will i'll explain all those things later so don't worry about that just understand that there is something or somewhere std mutex m1 then you can own this mutex by writing this std unique lock mutex and lock m1 and then you will handle this mutex m1 with this lock and this lock is nothing but a variable or a object and it allows these many things so can have different locking strategies so when you are writing like this you have different different strategy so this is one strategy you don't have to write anything when you are creating this object another strategy could be std let's assume i have written unique lock and then mutex and here some obj inside this you have to pass m1 and then comma and then you will pass the locking strategy and these are three locking strategy one is defer lock another one is try to lock and another one is adopt locking if let's suppose you are writing defer lock here like this then in that case when you are constructing this object this line it will not try to lock this mutex it will say that i will just own this mutex but i am not going to lock it or in other words it will wrap this mutex but it is not going to lock it okay the locking will happen in later point of time but not here but in this case because we have not given any defer lock here in example so it will try to lock this mutex at this particular line only okay i'll i'll show you all these things see this is the example and this is example number 1 i have two examples example number 1 is showing that i have not written any of the locking strategy then in that case it will automatically call the lock on the mutex m1 okay and this m1 is nothing but mutex here and another point is so we covered this one now another point is time constraint attempt at locking so you can actually attempt the locking using time constraint lock like try lock for and try lock until so i have given videos for these two you can go ahead and check out they are very simple it is nothing but you will do something like this m1 dot assuming this m1 is nothing but this mutex m1 dot try lock for here you will give time and let's suppose you have given 2 seconds there is a syntax to give the timing i'm just giving you the overview then in case if this mutex is not free then it will wait for 2 seconds the moment it asked for this lock from that time to 2 seconds it will wait okay otherwise if you just simply m1 dot lock if you just simply lock it try to lock it and if this mutex is not free this is going to wait for infinite amount of time if it is taking infinite amount of time but in this case you can tell the timing and here also it is similar but the syntax for time is little different for this until okay so these things are also possible with this unique lock so instead of m1 you will use if it is lock you will use lock and here also lock not here I'll leave it we are not talking about this one we are talking about this one so this is also possible lock dot try lock for this much amount of time okay so time constraint locking is also possible with unique lock and third is recursive locking is also possible i have given the video for recursive locking if you don't know go ahead and watch that video transfer of the lock ownership 
yes you can actually move this particular lock somewhere else but you can only move you cannot copy because you cannot have two ownership of the same thing so suppose you have this mutex you cannot have two objects pointing to this same mutex okay obj2 obj1 so this is not possible okay so only move is possible you can move the ownership of this mutex from object 1 to object b then object 1 will no longer be the owner of this mutex okay so this is covered now condition variable this is a new topic i'll be covering in next video or the next video of that and this is very good video or the topic it is used for notification purpose one thread t1 is running and once it is done with some job it can actually notify to this t2 which is actually waiting okay so t1 is doing some job and t1 is waiting for some particular mutex and once it is done it will notify to this t2 or number of threads can be there so it can notify to all that i am done and you you just come and try to get the mutex so there is a condition variable job I'll, I'll explain all these things in the coming videos so these things are possible with this unique lock and these are the locking strategies so defer lock is nothing but do not acquire ownership of the mutex at the same time i have given this example in example number two so don't worry we'll see that and second is try to lock so if you'll use this strategy it will try to acquire the ownership of the mutex without blocking so if you are not able to lock the mutex it will not wait for that mutex okay it will go ahead and this one is assume the calling thread is already has the ownership of the mutex it is like uh suppose you have already locked this mutex inside your thread let's suppose you have m1 dot lock okay so you have done this after this line you are creating your object like this and passing this m1 to that then this should not wait for this mutex because you have only logged it just after this i mean this particular line you just assume you have written this with comma here let's suppose you have lock and m1 comma this is strategy adopt lock so this makes sense right and assume that this full thing from here to here is written here okay so you have already logged it i mean you have already logged this mutex and you have come to this lines means you own the mutex okay and then you want to create the wrapper of this mutex then it is possible you can just tell that i want to adopt the lock which is already locked so this is how you use that adopt lock now let's look at this examples and we will sum this up so as you can see that this is fairly simple program here and this is example number one forget about this example number two let me give some space here okay fine okay so we have two threads task will act as thread here and we will create two threads this t1 i'm passing as a thread number and t2 is going as thread number so t1 or t2 any one of them can hold the lock here so let's suppose t1 have locked it then t1 will come here and will increment this buffer for loop 4 so loop 4 is coming from here so this 10 is assigned here and we will increment this buffer for 10 times and after this notice this we are not unlocking it because this unlocking is happening in the destructor of this unique lock okay so this destructor will be called because we have created this object in stack so destructor will automatically be called when the scope of this lock object will go off then in that case in that destructor it will unlock this mutex then once it is unlocked this thread 2 will try to lock it and we'll get the lock and we'll increment this buffer from 10 to 20 and let's see that execute this see t1 incremented this from 1 to 10 and then t2 started from 11 to 20 so any one of them can start first so it is not like t1 only will start this first and t2 will start second no t2 can start first and t1 can start later so you can notice that if you have not unlocked it t2 would have never got this lock and only t1 would have executed this and done what i'm saying is let's suppose if you are just simply 
using mutex just that's it just compile this and execute it see it is executed till t1 and t2 is still waiting see we are waiting and i'm sure we will wait till infinite and we will not get the lock i mean t2 will not get the lock because t1 only logged it forgot to unlock it so let's try to unlock that again t1 dot unlock so this is fine code let's kill this recompile it execute it see it is done okay so you have to unlock it but in our case we are not unlocking it it is doing the job automatically because this unlock is happening in the destructor of this one correct now let's move to the next example see we are using the locking strategy now and locking strategy is defer lock so does not call the lock on the mutex m because used defer lock correct so this comment says exactly what i said you before and as you have not logged this mutex here at this line you have to lock it later so why we do this actually what happens we are just saying that i am owning this but i am not locking it so you can have n number of code here and then you can lock it so this is the flexibility which is not available in log guard because log guard will immediately try to lock this as i have given the comment here it is not needed as it will be unlocked in the destructor of the unique lock so this is fairly simple code let me just simply execute this one compiled successfully executed this one so this is also compiled and giving you the same output correct so i think i'm done here thanks for watching guys don't forget to hit the like button guys if you like the video it will help me a lot and i'll see you in the next videos bye bye